Hi, good morning. Welcome to the From White Collar to Blue Collar podcast. My name's Phil. I'm your host. It's Monday morning again. And I have another topic here to go over for those of you working somewhere that in an office, most likely, and you're wondering, should I make the change? Should I go into the skilled trades and go into the complete unknown? So one topic that I wanted to go over is, should you go the entrepreneurial route to start with? Some of you maybe want to be an entrepreneur. You've been working in an office, low-level clerical job or something like that, whatever it is, and part of the reason you want to do what you want to do is that you want to be your own boss. You want to make your own business and have your own operation rather than starting back out out there in the workforce again and and uh starting out from a low level and and working your way up all over again because possibly if you were like me you were already have some years in the workforce you're not a kid anymore and you want to you want to build your own thing so i have to say that if you can avoid going this way i would i don't recommend it on one hand it just shows your ignorance as i stress in a lot of these podcasts it's called skilled trades for a reason because it's skilled work like any other profession or career it involves certain skills and if you've spent a lot of time in a completely different type of work especially the white collar work where you are not thinking about stepping on nails when you go to work then you really don't have the skills and you got to humble yourself and realize that because if you go the entrepreneur route and you're saying well i'm going to i'm going to quit and i'm going to quit this job i have now and i'm going to go start my own thing i'm going to i'm going to be the one doing the estimates i'm the one who's going to be hiring people you really don't know shit about any of that cuz it's not, and and it's not just a trade it's a business too it's just like the business that you're working in for whatever company you're working for at the end of the day it needs to make profit so not only are you possibly lacking the skills needed to go out there and and be proficient in the skilled trades but you don't have the business skills either because you're pretty much going to have your own white collar operation so you're going from you're going from exclusively white collar to blue collar and white collar because the running the business is going to be a huge part of what you do there's going to be books there's going to be managing your books dealing with profit and loss and all of that stuff all of that paperwork is still going to be there so you're putting that on your shoulders why not go out make the transition and then when you're proficient in the skill that you're looking to do, in the skilled trade that you're going into, then you are proficient in that. You know the ins and outs of that. And then you can go and, and start your own operation, start your own office. 
You're putting a lot on your shoulders by going out there and you, it's it's kind of a fake it till you make it. And can you fake Do you want to put that on your shoulders? I know you're you've been doing this job and you 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 just want to go out there and you want to do things your way possibly and maybe there's a fear you know you're you're going out there after let's say 10 years of working in an office and you're going to start out at the lowest the lowest level in whatever carpenter painter electrician and you're going to be making a lot of mistakes and and it can work out badly for you. I'm not going to lie. That there's there's a risk to that too. You come out and you don't got any of these skills. You're competing with the guys who younger guys who will demand less money and they uh and people are maybe more willing to deal with their in, ineptitude. Okay, so there's there's a lot of disadvantages there. I get it. And you're going to be screwing up. You're going to be making mistakes. And possibly these guys who are 20 years old, just because maybe they grew up in more of a blue-collar environment, they may be better than you. And then you know what? The people above you, your supervisors, there's that risk. They'll just give up on you. You just look incompetent to them. They cannot comprehend why you are older and why you are making the mistakes that you're making. And there is that possibility there. So I get it that you think, well, I'll, I'm going to just go out there. I got some money saved up and I'm going to I'm going to hire some experts and I'll just I'll, I'll get there eventually. I get it. Um, it's not an easy choice. At some point, listen, you 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 made the decision to go into the, the work that you're doing right now. And you've done it for years. Okay, it's a mistake. How do I get out of it? How do I get to where I want to be? It's not, it, it, it's, Possibly not going to be an easy transition. Any which way you go is going to have significant risks. The entrepreneur route. Can it be done? Yeah, I think it, I think it can be done. Make sure you hire the right people. As far as the fake it till you make it, you gotta you, you gotta make it fast. You gotta really put yourself out there. You gotta put yourself in that mentality too. That this is not this is not just a job where when you make a mistake, it can just be erased and done over. Okay, so I'm gonna say one thing about possibly the work you're doing right now when it's in computers, when, when the work is, when you type the wrong thing, when you, you, you can just delete it a lot of times, you make some kind of clerical error, it can be, I mean, you're going to have repercussions for your mistakes, no doubt about it. You screw up an account or something, you screw up the money, you're going to you're going to hear about it. But I did feel when I was in those types of jobs that there was a, there was some way of reversing it somehow a lot of times when it was when it was clerical work, somebody would catch it, there's somebody's job in the office to catch it. In <laughs> It, it it felt it felt like in in blue collar work that that making big mistakes a lot of times the consequences could be much more severe in terms of if you're the guy who's who's causing the company a, you know often they're 
you know, sometimes I was in smaller outfits, smaller operations. And if time goes by and you're the person who's causing the company to lose money, whether it's your own company or somebody else's company, it's the consequences can be really severe and they're going to stand out fast. Like when I was in a big, you know, like Fortune 500 company being an office worker, I felt like it didn't stand out as fast when I made mistakes. But like you, you're you're on a job site and and you make a big mistake and okay, even if you have that guy, it's your own company and you have that guy on your crew who's you know can fix it. He's not going to be happy about it. And the tolerance for that kind of stuff is 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 going to be used up fast probably because they're going to have to do their work and and they're going to have to redo the work that that you did wrong. So you better learn what the basics are fast and and how to get a grasp on things. So these are going to be some of your challenges. Um, I think I've said it before in other podcasts, if you can find a place in, in the field that you're looking to do, where you can start out and get some kind of base level skills first, something narrow down, a, a, a kind of narrow field, you're, you're going to be, you get proficient at something that's important to a company first, get the most basic skills down. If it's working with, with metal, you get to know metal and, and what's important to people in welding, in, 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 in that side of the industry. If it's more mine, which has been working with wood, what, what are the most basic things that are important? Okay. Like in wood finishing, why is sanding important? Okay. If you don't know anything about wood finishing, ask yourself, why is sanding wood so important? You probably don't really know. So something like that, where you're doing, you have a more narrow focus and you get the basic skills down. So that was part of my road to success. If you want to know one thing that I felt really helped me, it was that rather than going out there and being being responsible for all different kind of tests in, in, in woodworking, whether it's operating a table saw, whether it's building furniture, whether it's refinishing furniture, whether it's restoring furniture. I put myself out that like that, and that was a much more difficult road than when I went into a company where we focused on smaller projects, smaller scale projects, that had a lot of repetitive tasks where I was doing a lot of things that were similar but different, which gave me the experience of thinking on my feet, okay, because I was working in, in furniture, I got a job with a furniture repair company, and everything, each task was different, but I was re- responsible for doing a lot of the same things, repairing recliners, starting to see the way that they break, starting to see the way that sofas break. Each sofa break is probably different, but there's some similarities in the repair, okay? And these, this was not luxury furniture. This was commercial furniture. It the furniture was insured. So the stakes weren't as high. So I was given some allowance to actually make mistakes. So somebody in whatever industry you're going into, just if, if you're going to shoot for the stars, 
then 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 you're taking that on and good luck to you and I think there there is a chance of success it depends possibly on your personality your drive your aptitude I'm not saying it's necessarily the wrong thing to just go out there and start your own shop and you're going to hire quality people and you're just going to pick it up along the way. I'm not saying it can happen, but I would, my recommendation is if, if you can avoid that, then avoid it. So, um, that's another podcast here. I don't want to keep it too long. If you have any questions, send them out to me. You're probably going to hear a lot, some similar points in my podcast. I, but these are things like I really want to emphasize from my experience. Now, other people may have different experiences, but these are my. This is this is what I know, and maybe you'll find it useful. Maybe you don't. The, the trades, there's so many different skilled trades. There's so many different jobs in blue collar work. So it's hard to generalize sometimes. But this this is what advice I can give. So uh, questions, comments, send them out. Uh, please like this video. If you did, if you don't, then don't like it. Okay, well... We'll have another one for you soon and look forward to more and more of these in the future.